Constant used in making the filament in light bulbs has the highest melting point of all metals. When you turn on the light, electricity flows through the filament and causes it to heat off. When it gets hot, tungsten gives off light. It shows a light bulb. You have the wires, the electrodes come up, and you have the filament, which is the red part. This is the tungsten metal. And as electricity passes through it, the electricity is energy, and it makes it heat up. And then the metal gives off energy and light energy and heat energy. When you're through copying this off the overhead, read the pre-video question and answer it. We have on the pre-video question, read the passage below, then answer the questions following it. You are studying for a science exam late at night in your bedroom. Distracted, you gaze out the window to watch a cat play under a street light. You jump back to reality as a flash of bright lightning illuminates your room. The sudden flash is followed by total darkness. Even the street lights are out. You look out the window again, this time noticing the blinking lights of fireflies as they move along the street. Question A. Name four sources of light present in the passage above. Write that down. Four sources of light that are present in the opening statement at the top of your sheet. If you can see anything at all, you're seeing light waves. In fact, if you can feel any heat, Justin. you're seeing waves that are very much like light waves. You see, light waves are called electromagnetic waves. And electromagnetic waves are everywhere. They literally fill the universe. And they come from all kinds of places. Here's something that you might not know. You can try this. Uh, go get some wintergreen lifesavers at the store and find a friend. Go into a dark room and put these wintergreen lifesavers in your mouth and bite down on them. We just keep with your mouth open. What you're going to see is sparks. These make light. Well, here's a very familiar light source. It's a, it's a natural light source. Well, the torch itself isn't natural, but the fire in it is. You see, what happens here is the oxygen atoms in the air are being combined with the propane atoms in a fuel tank. And when that happens, a great deal of energy is being released. Some of the energy that's being released is released in heat, and some is being released in light. But the reason is that the electrons and the atoms are moving around a great deal. And when they move around, they release light. When do electrons release light energy? Get that one? When they're moving around, a lot of activity. At that process in the show, we're going to take a look at the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Coming right up. Of course, 
of natural light, well, I mean, besides the sun, is probably lightning. But did you ever stop to think where lightning comes from? Well, I can actually make homemade lightning with this device. This is called the Van de Graaff generator. And incidentally, the guy who invented this grew up about me. What's that called? The Van de Graaff generator. What's the interactive question? Uh, uh the one draw one the illustration of a Van de Graaff generator and label it positively negative charges. And describe it. All right. You look at the overhead. That's a white hole. No. Generally. Artistic interpretation of a Van de Graaff generator. <laughs> we have on the inside of it, we have a rubber belt. And the moving of the rubber belt charges the atomic particles. <coughs> yeah. You have glass tubing on the outside. Glass tubing is uh, a non-conductor, which means electricity doesn't flow easily through it. And then we have a metal top. The metal is a conductor. The, the negative charges build up on the metal dome, and when something with positive charges comes near it, little lightning bolts shoot out the side. He's going to show examples of that. I've seen that before. Oh, no. All right, everyone pay attention now. Here you go. He was a hometown guy. So I'm going to do this among other things. So let me show you how this works. This knob adjusts the speed at which this belt moves past the dome on the top. There's that rubber so belt. Turn it out so you can see the belt. There it goes. As I speed that belt up, it. what it's going to do is brush side goes down, over side the other side of this metal piece right here. What that does is it brushes, brushes electrons off that metal piece. If it brushes enough electrons off, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a charge difference built up. It's going to be a positive charge here because the electrons are being brushed off, and a negative charge out here, so there's going to be a charge difference. Well, nature has this thing about charge differences. It doesn't really like them. So what it tries to do is get rid of them. Well, the way it gets rid of them is it makes the spark jump from one to the other. And that's called lightning. So let me make lightning jump from my hand, or from the dome to my hand. But before I do that, I need to explain something about this cord. Now, this thing sounds dangerous, and it, it looks pretty dangerous, but it's not all that dangerous. And the reason is, it's, it's plugged up all right, but this power cord doesn't do anything but supply electricity to the motor that's turning this belt. The electricity that's jumping from my hand, or from this thing to my hand, is really low amperage, so it's not going to hurt me. So you don't have to worry about me dying in the studio, but it's pretty easy to watch. Get started. Yeah. See that? Okay. And the reason you're probably hearing my microphone pop is because my microphone makes a good ground. So the electricity is going from this dome to my hand, and my hand to the microphone. And you're making a popping sound. Electric. We can also learn a little bit about how natural light and artificial light are related. Because I can actually make artificial light from this natural light source. Watch this. Guys, got he has that second part of the interactive question. How do you like fluorescent bulb? Mm -hmm. He's going to show that. Right here it says, uh, describe how you can use the generator to light a fluorescent bulb. On the interactive questions, we'll show you right now. Flex it straight on the chair. You're going to need to turn the lights down now. As soon as I can get electrons to jump from the dome to the light bulb, they'll see something. There they go. What's happening is this is, of course, a fluorescent light bulb, and there's a fluorescent gas inside this bulb. As the electrons jump from the dome to the electrode on the end of the light bulb, well, they excite the gas inside the tube. So the electrons are exciting gas that's what we do too. He said, uh, there's a, uh, your stent above and in the Where's that? He said, it's a, uh, fluorescent. It's a fluorescent bulb and it's a fluorescent, uh, light. Yeah, that's what I said. 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 Yeah, that's what as the as, as it excites the gas within the fluorescent bulb, it produces light. It excites it. It excites it. Is it exciting? You go to six flags and you have both excitement. 
it would glow for days. Incidentally, the reason that light bulbs are covered with glass is so that the light bulb will last longer. If it wasn't covered with glass, so the tungsten would have been that way. Post-video question says uh, choose either the solar system model or the stair step model, the atom. I'm going to let him explain both these models, the solar system model and the stair step model, and then we'll go back and you can sketch it and describe it so you know which one you like better.